Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Advanced WordPress Theme Development. In the previous video, we learned about how to create an author archive page. In this video, we are going to get into the detail of how to customize the author image, which means that how do we upload the author image from WordPress and in case if it is not available, how do we show the initials of the author? For example, IS for an Imran Sayyid instead of showing the ugly default image. Okay, so let's begin. So if you go to users, uh, if you display, let's say this image, so this is uploaded on Gravatar, which is great. So you can see there is an image available. But in case if the image is not uploaded on the Gravatar, and if you click on view, it shows this ugly, uh, you know, default image, and I don't personally like it. I'm sure on many of the websites or applications you must have seen, or even on Gmail you must have seen that in case if you've not uploaded your image, then it shows the initial. For example, take a look over here. My Gmail is showing the initial I because I have not uploaded my image. So we're gonna achieve something similar, okay? Because we don't wanna show this ugly image, okay? So how do we do that? So let's go back and see. Before we jump onto that, I would like an ability to basically upload an image from here as well from the WordPress dashboard because some of the users may not have an account on Gravatar and we don't want to you know, limit them that they have to go to Gravatar, which is this website to upload their image. They should have an ability to upload it from WordPress itself. So I have added a plugin and this plugin is called WP User Avatars. This is a free plugin and you can activate that. Once you activate it, if you go to users and let's say you go to Kathy user, you can see that now I have an option to basically upload an avatar over here. So let's do that. So let's go ahead and upload this image. Let's do that. So the image is uploaded, all right? Update the user. And now if you go back and check, you've got this image, which is brilliant, okay? Now, in case of the user hasn't uploaded through the WordPress dashboard, then we're going to check if it's uploaded in Gravatar. Uh, if it is not uploaded in Gravatar, then we're going to ensure that we show the initials. So how do we do that? Well, we've created a custom function called Equila has avatar and it takes one parameter, which is the author email. So let's see what's going on inside of this function. If you go over here, uh, this basically has this basically is first of all is getting the avatar URL. Okay, so get avatar URL is going to get us the avatar URL in case if it's been uploaded on the Gravatar. Okay, so get avatar URL is going to get us the URL of the user image. Okay, then we have created a custom function called Equila is uploaded via WP admin. This is a custom function. It takes the URL of that image and this is just on top. Uh, this is going to pass the URL. It's going to pass the query param. So what happens is that when the image is uploaded from the Gravatar, it will have a query parameter, okay? Uh, let's say S equals 96, which means the size of the image, okay, uh, et cetera. But if it's uploaded from the admin, then it's not gonna have that query param, okay? I'm gonna show that to you. If you do an inspect element, notice that this is uploaded from the WordPress dashboard. Notice that in the URL, there's nothing, there's no query parameters, right? So that's the difference. So if we can establish that it does not have the query param, that means that we will we can say that we can safely say that it's been uploaded from the WordPress dashboard. Okay. So that's what we're checking over here. We're basically checking does it have the query param query, okay, which is this. If it doesn't, which means go ahead and if it's empty, then that means it's been uploaded from the WordPress dashboard. That's all this function is doing, is just checking that. Okay, so over here, in case if it's been uploaded from the admin, return true because then we don't have to check anything else. The avatar image is present, it's been uploaded from the admin, which is brilliant. So we can continue further, okay? Next up, for the scenario two, in case if it's uploaded in Gravatar, the what we can do is that when constructing the URL, we can use the parameter D equals 404. What this is gonna do is this will cause the Gravatar to return 404 error rather than image if the user hasn't set a picture, okay? So, so that's what we're doing over here. What we're doing is we're passing, we're in fact attaching 
this d equals 404 in the gravatar url okay and then we are getting the headers this is going to get the headers even if you print that header i'll show you what you get so take a look so if you print this header okay this header then in case if it's a successful upload then you're going to get 200 okay and the status is 200 okay but if not in case if he is not uploaded you still get the gravatar url but then it's going to get 404 not found and that's what we're going to check so if the request status is 200 which means user has uploaded the avatar on gravatar site uh, and if it isn't then this spreg match is not going to match 200 in the headers and the first item which means the first item is this if it matches 200 using preg match function which means status is 200 if not uh, that is why it will return 404 uh, now we have to do all of this and the whole reason why is because as you've seen that uh, even if the user hasn't uploaded the image on the gravatar we were getting a default image right which means it does return a url irrespective of whether they have uploaded or not uploaded so the only way to check whether it's uploaded is by checking the status and by adding this extra parameter which is the d uh, equals 404 okay so this is how we will be able to check that so first we check if it's uploaded by admin if it is return true that means has the, has gravatar if not we add this query param and then we check the status in the header if it's 200 or not if it's not 200 it'll return false okay so that's that's all that function is doing okay so we check if he has the avatar if it's not then we go ahead and uh, render this default content which will contain the first name and the last name of the user so let me show that to you so what I'm going to do is I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to remove this beautiful lady's picture, update the user. Uh, you can see that we just have this circle, and if you inspect element, let me show you header. So that's a span. So this is your author ID avatar, author first name. So that's your author's first name. As you can see, that's Kathy. So that's already coming, right? And let's add. It to the last name also so you have the first name you have the last name right and that's coming from get the author meta right and then inside of this just have the empty uh, div this doesn't have anything just has a span and this is where the initials which is C and S will be inserted using JavaScript so you're gonna write JavaScript for that that inserts that okay and this is just basically an empty div which is having a width and height position uh, you know border radius and background just to create that kind of image okay uh, image feel and now we're going to go to our javascript so what we'll do is we'll go to our assets we'll go to source javascript and then create a file called author.js okay and we also need to ensure that we go to our webpack config and inside of webpack config we need to add this as an entry because notice that we're creating a new file this time so we need to ensure that we add that inside of the entry so that when we run the npm run dev so let's hit it so hit npm run dev it's going to create that inside of the build js and now you can see that the author.js has been created we also need to enqueue it so we'll go to class assets which is inside of the includes directory so include classes class assets that's where it is and inside of that we're going to add this author script we're going to register the script say handle name is author.js you can give it what you like then get the path up until the build author.js so get the path up until here which is the build directory and then pass jquery as a fallback in case if we need to ha use it then file m time is going to give us the um, timestamp and it was last changed uh, to be used as a version in footer equals true then we want to ensure we render this only on the author archive page we don't want to render it anywhere else because of performance you should not ideally load unnecessary javascript when it's not required like otherwise if if you do not use this condition which is is author it's not going to check that and it's going to include that javascript on all of the pages which we don't want so using this function is author this is going to ensure uh, that it's only going to be loaded on the author archive page you can see it determines whether the query is for an existing author archive page so we're going to check that and then we're just going to enqueue this script author.js 
and now instead of author.js i've pasted uh, this particular code snippet you'll get that onto the you'll get that onto the aquila repository and please do start it while you're here to support my work and i've created a class a constructor method inside of that we're just getting hold of each of the elements which is the span profile image span so we're getting hold of this element basically profile image container the first name and the last name we'll be basically getting the first name the last name and the text inside of which which means we'll get hold of the kathy and s from here so this these are the two variables are going to contain that and then we call the init function inside of which will ensure that the this particular element which is this span right here is actually uh, available if it is available it has length then we're going to continue further we're going to get the char at zero which means we're going to get the first letter out of the first name so that this code is responsible to get that and then we get the first letter of the last name so this code is responsible for that okay over here then we're going to basically concatenate that and if the initials are available we'll use that otherwise we'll pass this as default because remember that we are getting the first name and the last name but there could be a possibility that the user has not added the first and last name in the from the wordpress dashboard so in that case we need to have a fallback like this is dependent on this first name and last name but in case if they have not added it then we don't want to show an empty div over there that is why a fallback is a in case if nothing is available then all we do is we use this container so this container right here and we pick this we plug this c and s and we insert that here okay so that's what it's doing uh, it's taking this getting hold of this container and we're saying that dot text equals initial whatever the value is and now if you refresh the page notice what happens over here there you go congratulations so now you can see that it's inserted the initial c and s over here and that's why you're able to see it okay and then you just have some bunch of styles which you can check it out that's pretty cool huh that um, if the image is not available we can control it ourselves which is brilliant so i hope you did like the video if you did please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already and uh, you can also join our membership you can see the perks and you will get some more benefits some membership only videos etc and do follow me on github my github handle is imran h sayyad and on twitter as well my twitter handle is cory tech and i'm gonna see you in the next video thank you very much bye bye